Okay, let us continue part two of this little introduction to the new reality setup. And uh, the programs that I'm talking about are, of course, within the understanding of which program are you going to align yourself with. The ones that are under the poems or the ones that are under the books. And here I'm not going to talk about the restoration program because I covered that in the transition sciences and it's all up to people what they want to do. But right now I'm working, I'm not doing the POM because I'm done with the regress races. I don't care if they've got a new version or whatever they've engineered themselves into become. It's what is, they have their main uh, stations, so to speak, in Americas. Uh, they, that's their their territory. And since I'm not living in America, I'm living in Europe, I'm living in Denmark, I'm following the enhanced humans because that's where they are going inside this reality field. And again, as we know, when we talk about just on a, an, on a base program level, the way we run things in Denmark are very, very different from the way the, the ways things are unfolding in America. So already there, we can see there's a difference between the original races that went to what we call Denmark, not the Nordics, they took over later on, but the races that were before the Nordics, the version of the Pleiadians that came here, and I sent them in the network behind a reality field that uh, chose to come up north before the Ice Age. So we're talking about land masses that were long before the current type of civilization, again, before 12,000 years ago. And they were part of a group that technically completed the fourth cycle reseeding and moved up north to begin some of their new projects. And they were technically stationed on what we now understand as the Arctic, because at that time there were land masses there and it was connected to England and uh, Denmark. And that that's the five cycles or the five uh, rings uh, from the Arctic and down to, or the North Pole down to all the five rings of latitude that are covered. That's the original continent of that group of humans from different uh, um, sectors within a reality field after the reseeding that were positioned there. So you see that they already put in a seeding of the ones that had completed the fourth cycle after the fall of Atlantis and then were reseeded in up north. And that was put dormant uh, during the Ice Age uh, due to um, different... Um, there were, again, this is, this is where it gets complicated because we had the reseeding after the fall of Atlantis and that's the fourth cycle. And that ran for a very long time. And again, we are outside of time. So therefore I can't tell, oh, that was then years ago or that years ago or whatever. But we could say, for instance, when we talk about the Chrome and Young, the red hair, the, the, the original Celts, they, they have been, we have discovered bodies that are, we could date back 45,000 years or 50,000 years ago. But that's again, not actually because we're also seeing remnants of it in uh, Machu Picchu where we have these different, we have this, um, this uh, stone construction where you see all sorts of different faces, including greys if you like, uh, all different insectoids. That's The greys have their face features from insectoids. They look like ants or mantids, right? So that's just a grey version of it. So, so we have these different uh, civilizations that were colonizing alongside with the reseeding of what we call the human projects that were brewed out of the Neanderthal genome as well as other variations of it, which of many cease to exist. These are the primary civilizations that we have remnants of within these different <clears throat> monolithic cultures that are not what science thinks they are and they are uh, these civilizations were semi fourth dimensional as in within the, the regressed races and the original features before the hijacking <coughs> So we are having remaining features of still being able to operate with the holographic network in earlier civilizations, which we are seeing in these monolithic constructions that are made in ways where there are literally, they are so perfectly uh, arranged and they have all sorts of features that we think must be done by technology, but it is done by a different type of quote unquote technology because it's in the fourth dimension and thereby <clears throat> the access to the crystalline pattern behind all manifest matter is accessible and by that can be operated with an engineer to hold a holographic pattern, which then get crystallized and manifested using the timeline event energies into solidified matter. 
So that's how they did it. Uh, and there were other reseedings there that were up further north that were at the end of the fourth cycle and then tipping into the fifth. And we are kind of those of us who are up here now. We're supposed to take that challenge and no, not Canada included. But the, the, what we could say when we look at the Scandinavian countries or Iceland and the ones that are up there, not necessarily Finland, uh, because they are more part of the Russian world, uh, or the Russian network. So they are more, uh, trans- human in their ways and forms um, and they're not everybody from Norway and not everybody from Sweden there's a lot of transhuman agenda going on in Sweden as well and not all the way throughout in Denmark and all the way throughout in England so we can't say oh they are there they're good to go no we still have a lot of transition to do but it is within the reality network beneath our feed um, it is possible because the civilizations that were reseeded there that could do the shift from the fourth into the fifth after the fall of Atlantis were already seeded there. They did not exist for long and there were wars and there was stuff going on. And then we had the Ice Age that put everything under ice, including Machu Picchu. So that means that Machu Picchu and all of these monolithic constructions, some of them are older than what science wants them to be, and they have eroded because of the ice. But again, the science does not, do not understand this, so they are just looking at what's left, and then they use their paradigms to interpret things. So, but we have, when you, I think it's uh, ancient history or uh, ancient uh, astronaut history or something on uh, the History Channel of America or someone, uh, ancient astronauts, uh, they have been playing with the idea and, and there are, there are things that, that kind of points in that direction, including the Sphinx being older than 12,000 years due to the erosion and what's going on there, are, uh, things that are unexplainable within the current paradigm. We have got, uh, as I talked about granite vessels, Vessels, beautiful pots and, and cups and, and vases and what have you made in a way that nobody can even imagine how it's possible using current day technology, laser, whatever. You won't get the same beautiful smooth features, but that's because it's work from holographic and with that creating the holographic imprint and then impose it onto the, the network behind uh, what we call matterforms, crystallizing it a specific way and then put in what we say that type of vibration that puts it into manifestation. And then it comes out the other end as a, a solidified type of vessel using the timeline of energies. I talk about that uh, in the book, Souls of Humanity. How many thought, well, that's actually a new way of working with energy, trying to transform. But the problem was instead of transforming it to its higher purity rate, instead they transformed it into more manifest forms that could not be um, destroyed. As some of these granite vessels, they're there, they will, the, the, the decay rate is enormously slow. So that's kind of counterproductive to the outer domain features, right? So that's also some of the things that went wrong. Things got more and more solidified, which led to the possibility of engineering the enclosure. So see, everything is done by our actions and how we use the energies. But there were wars, uh, to put it that way, and that's what has been shown. And a lot of these civilizations were then completely blown up. And then we were put on our eyes for a long time, including some of the, the more advanced civilizations or societies. And then what came out with the hijacking and the, the remnant uh Again, we have the Dracos coming in, offering to the elder races. They have been trying to um, preserve what was left by putting it under ice, by changing the magnetic field propositions, etc., etc., etc. And all of it had failed. And then the, the Dracos came in, offered different new types of genetic configurations. And the elders said yes. And with that, the hijacking became possible because they had your gene code, the code systems that aligned with their reality fields, their code streams of their reality fields. We had the gene code inside this reality field, creating the fields for it. And then they could get access and they got access and different uh, crafts were put into the um, reality field network, as well as different types of uh, TTs, which have grown into becoming elementals, were put into the racial grids. 
And that recreated what we understand as the basic for the enclosure. And the idea was to preserve what was left of the original solar system humanities inside the enclosure, try to repair them, quote unquote. And uh, they were then taken over and enslaved and became something entirely else. So, so that's kind of where we are when we talk about the short version of a very, very long type of history. So when we go back to the original versions of the density energies and what is possible, we also understand that there were different positions of races that were on different levels of the cycles within the different sectors on our planet. And it did not look as it does now uh, before the ice age. It looked different when the ice melted uh, our Earth, even though the tectonic plates might be where they are, the surface areas were changed. And by that allowed for new reseedings of what we call the slave humans or the enslaved uh, vessels under the contracts of the Dracos, which were then taken over by the the scavengers, and that is some of the things that the palm races are utilizing. Um, also, considering that the palm races are working with different forms of technocratic wells, uh, hence making it more oriented to what, what we call a um, transhuman agenda, which will later on uh, um, be unfolded uh, into different sectors in the Americas. And there will be groups that will try to bridge to the puck races via NOAA and their sub-oceanic stations that are now positioned closer to Iceland than it were prior. It has shifted because there is technically an energetic barrier in the Atlantic between uh, Americas, and I'm here talking about both South and North and Canada, and the rest of the world, similarly as a bridge that is being built uh, across Europe. And that's some of the things we're seeing the remnants of now in the political disagreements that are going on right now um, in Europe. And that will continue within the next 10 years. And then the bridge or the wall of energy will be built there. And then we will create a new version of Europe that will be... Um, from the, the, the point of the, the Tropic of Cancer and up to the, the five, the, the five rings of the latitude. That's the future human communities that will be up there because it's seeded in already there. The fifth cycle the energies is in the network. It's been under ice for a long time. And the societies, Denmark and, and not as much England because we had the Baals that migrated up there and trashed a lot of stuff. So they have a, a rough, um, transition to do. We'll see if they manage or not, but they have the possibility because it was originally a fifth cycle, uh, part of the fifth cycle um, sector. So they have the possibility. The question is that if they want to do it because they're also fourth cycle, right? Even though we have Marduk that pretends to be fifth cycle, he was still what we call in the higher end of the fourth. And he was not interested in following the fifth cycle of the original uh, ways of doing things here. He was part of some of the uh, Anunnaki invading races, but a later version of the Anunnakis, uh, not the Anunnakis that were part of the Sumerian societies. Again, we have these different groupings, so it's, it's difficult. Who belongs to who and what is going on? Right? It's difficult. So that's ancient history and not much of our interest because most of these have pulled out or rearranged themselves in new vessels inside the parallel universal matrix. And that's also why I'm not doing the POM races because most of these old guys that I've been battling and dealing with for so long of the negative alien agenda, they are, have got new vessels inside the palm. So they are there. They, they are continuing that. It's, it's like what we saw during Second World War, the Nazis that went to America. It's the same thing. It's like, yeah, you have got sciences, so we'll invite whatever criminal, genocide, or horrific things you have done. We'll just, we'll just scratch that and pretend it doesn't exist because you've got sciences, you've got technology, you've got knowledge, come our way. So that's kind of what is with the palms. They, they take whatever they can get to survive, so to speak, to get be part of their quadrant and the struggles within their hierarchical competitive trade systems that are close to warring territorial um uh, rules of engagement, which makes it a very competitive and difficult world to be part of. So there are many reasons why I don't want to be there. I'm not joining things that are so um, antagonistically going against the original progressive understandings and dynamics. 
So with that understanding, we are then saying, okay, then there is the other one that is not perhaps good, 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 but at least it's still within what we could see civilizations that are trying to get to the original universal cycles, although it's now going through a parallel universal structure and some completely different races I'm not really acquainted with yet because their configuration and the way they are utilizing the density energies are on a different vibrational rate. They have a different um, rotation to their fields, their uh, the angular uh, rotation their Victoria amplification factors are different. They, the way they operate with things are completely different than the ones that we are utilized in the progressive world. So I'm, I'm not just saying, oh yeah, I'm all in. I'm taking it slowly, just working with it. But we are within this cross sector between either this or that. And we learn as change makers as part of the change maker material that as well as the transition science is that if we work with some sort of opposition, we are able to create some sort of synergy. And that's why we're going with this one. We're looking at and saying, okay, let's see what you have got. Our opposition is not the POMs. Our opposition is the original restoration program and the original progression dynamics as I have outlined them so far. Uh, the, the possibility, the unfolding of the new levels of it that were part of the fifth cycle that was seeded into the Northern Hemisphere is not yet visible because there are not enough people there yet. So I'm working very hard to get to that level of my mind field where I can, via my expansion field and influential sphere, can activate the information there and then begin integrating that into my brain. So that's some of the new, what we call the whole future reality model, models that I want to work with. That's part of the original fifth cycle that was supposed to unfold, not as part of the enclosure, not as part of the restoration program, but actually as part of what we call the um, not necessarily the reseeding, but of course it takes a position there. And the question was, what was the grand purpose of the reseeding? Was it the restoration program? And my my gut feeling tells me no. So what was it? Was it within the timeline event energies? No, it was definitely to transform the timeline event energies. And the seeding of the races up here were. Um, my best guess is that they were actually aiming to get back uh, into the progressive worlds and out of the LPU, but not via the restoration program, because as I said, the restoration program is technically connected to the sixth dimension or the low point of the 612 pillar, and it's connected to the fourth cycle. So when we move into the fifth cycle, we don't need the restoration program. Because there we'll learn to work with holographic code systems and reality fields directly. And with that, we don't need a restoration program that assists us with inbuilt technologies. At that point in the fifth cycle, we're generating our own. We should be masters of the different pillars at that point in the fifth cycle, uh, pillar one to seven, two, eight, three, nine, four, ten, and going into the five, eleven pillar. And by that, don't need the restoration program that's tied to the fourth cycle as if uh, the, the reseeding of the fourth cycle races, if they didn't make it or things were collapse or whatever, they would be able to do the restoration programs. Again, I'm adding in more information to what you already got from the transition sciences, because as I create more and more understanding within my own mind field and transforming that into its higher and higher po um, possibility rates of potential impressions that are unfolding via the code streams of the original holographic network behind our density one out of domain reality and what was engineered into it as an attempt to transform energies prior and after the timeline event. My best guess is, and I know that's true because I get it directly, is that what was done with the fifth cycle races that were supposed to unfold here, they had to be more close to the original fifth cycle uh, of the LPU before the timeline event, since that would be where they would be able to bridge back into the progressive wells. Of course, we have the 612 pillar also, but that's uh, as we kind of say, well, the version of it that I kind of have worked with are the pillar project as I have worked with it 
so far has of course has of course been part of the LPU. So the pillar project that we engineered here were part of the LPU. So technically there is not a pillar project that is similar in the progressive worlds because there we have different kind of features. But when we talk about the pillar project, if we hadn't had the timeline event, we could say, well, the, the 511 pillar and the pillar project, if we haven't had the timeline event, would have been where we would learn to create developmental programs, re-engineer a holographic energy system to align with the holographic settings and code streams of the progressive worlds and begin to build in different um, what we call holographic features, create different sciences, work with this type of energy of the LPU, transforming it out of the LPU setting and into the progressive wells where we would be more and more aligned with that with their five, what we call the fifth cycle version. Then we had the 612 that were also inside this reality. But since it has been demolished to a high degree, uh, both by the timeline event, but also by the hijackers and everything that's going on there, and it is connected to the 28 pillar, the 410 pillar, as well as um, these civilizations that fell in this, then I'm not going to say, well, we'll do the inner domain here because it doesn't really make sense. So what was the 612 pillar um, before the timeline event inside this reality field as part of the pillar project? That would be the groups that were able to go between the progressive worlds and the LPU core domain. So it doesn't follow the original dynamics of in the 612 pillar, that level, that's where you, you elevate to the next stage uh, within the core domains. No, here it would be those who would administer and participate in uh, creating the breaches between the councils of the progressive worlds as well as the what was going on inside the LPU and the 511 pillar were what we call where the humanoids had their councils and their arrangements, but the 612 were the progressive humans where we had our councils and our alignment with the progressive world where we could uh, travel through different holographic uh, features uh, using a specific network between the councils of the progressive worlds as well as the councils of the LPU under the progressive races, so that the core domain were ours, the inner domain were the humanoids. So now you also begin to understand why it is so today as well, and why the 612 pillar were taken out first, so that we wouldn't be able to get access, and in that actually be able to quote-unquote save anyone. What was left were of the true humans or progressive humans were in the 410 uh, cycles, that's the elder races that were there, the 511 was shifted under to the control of the solar races, the Syrian councils that got infiltrated, as well as the different humanoid um, groups that existed in what we call the inner domains. And all of the original inner domain uh, progressive humans were uh, slaughtered, caught up, chopped up, divided and recreated to be four cycle races. Um, inside the new version of the new seeding of the fourth cycle as part of the civilization that we know of um, that began 12,000 years ago. Okay, again, history. So you kind of understand why we are re-engineered to, to complete the fourth cycle to begin with and why we don't have access to the fifth. So that's also part of the whole challenge when we begin to work with, okay, the fifth cycle that originally were there were between what we'll called the solar reaches and the progressive uh, human councils that were collaborating together. Here we're talking about the human humanoid races under the Syrians. And that's also why the one that created the enclosure or the Syrian, the vegan Syrian, as I often refer to as my brother, which is inaccurate, but we are from the same lineage. He were the one, were one of the ones that administered the 511 pillar and were part of these councils as a bridge between the progressives and the humanoids. And that's why he inserted a lot of humanoid genetics into his energy system. And eventually he flipped and became a complete humanoid. And then he got more and more infected by the D13 uh, collectives and their genetic strands because he was um, experimenting or tampering, you decide yourself, um, with what he wanted to achieve because he was overly ambitious and that uh, led to his downfall. 
Okay, so now you kind of get a little bit of that one also why I've been able and had to clear out everything that was connected to him so we could begin and say, okay, what were the progressives uh, version of the fifth cycle? And that's the one I keep uh, trying to get into. And right now I'm using the opposition of the, the Gaian races of the 1-7 pillar, even though it's, it's not on the accurate level. But they are in the 1-7 pillar. We are working with the architecture, but a more simplistic manner. And we need that when we are talking about recreating our physical vessel, which is the transformative energy system as well. All of the transition signs is the progression work itself. All 29 courses or how many there are. They are technically what is part of the 1-7 pillar. So we are having a lot of work that we need to do just to get to that level as a minimum to understand how we work with holographic energies. So when we talk about the challenges of the day, because I'm going up and down and whatever, let's, let's put our feet on the ground a little bit here and say, okay, so one of the features, I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it here again, because that's part of the enhanced humans of the future, as well as the, the POC races and everybody who lives in holographically driven realities. There is no tomorrow. There's only today. And that is when you're awake today. We don't sleep in the, in the other worlds, but we are doing it still here. So we'll run with the configuration as it is now, the programs that we are part of now. There is only today. So if you receive an email today, you handle the email today. If you receive an order today, you handle the order today. If you receive an impression that you need to work with, that you need to unfold from a possibility to a probability, you work with it today. You work with it before you go to sleep. And that also goes for those of you who are getting anything from me, which is going to be a bit of a hassle because people are kind of, yeah, they get the email and then, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that and whatever, everything comes in the way. And then they respond the day after. But the day after, I'm in a different place. Reality has been changed. I'm in a different place because I work with everything on a daily basis. So I am amping up, I'm using the amplification factor of the vector of the matrix of change that are being put into a reality. And again, it has two versions, the pump version and the poke version. And I'm trying to, to give you the information of the poke version because the pump version is not really of our interest. And for those of you in the US that want to do the, the enhanced humans, you can via the NOAA programs and you will get your version of it uh, as uh, you are learning to work with the puck version of it, you will get the adjustments that fit your um, NOAA version, so to speak, because you also know I was part of the NOAA projects to begin with, but they, that group that I was under chose to align with the Baals, and uh, when I went to Australia, they did not see it as in their interest for me to be part of their projects anymore and they discarded me and handed me over to the scavengers in Australia, right? But that was due to some of my own choices. I could just have stayed at home, so to speak, and not gone there. Um, there are some very strict rules when we travel from jurisdictions to jurisdictions, especially when we talk about the POM races that are under, as I said, very territorial, warrior, trade-like um, rules of engagement. Uh, that has changed the ones that are part of the European sector of nowhere. They are, they are going to choose what we call the enhanced humans version. They are technically the enhanced humans from America that have shifted aside because they don't want to be part of the pumps either because they are not uh, descendants of the regressed races. They might have got infusions of them, but they have developed themselves into a different species, so to speak. Uh, we know some of them traveled out in 2016 as well, and they have come back and they are rearranging their sector so that the NOAA position or the NOAA factions are dividing as well. So this is where it makes it difficult for us to understand inside this reality how things can change overnight, but that's because there is no time. If they alter their genetic configuration, they become part of different code streams and they become part of different realities. And by that, they are operating with a different mindset and become a completely different species. And we have to follow that 
amplification factor as well. The more we work with energy per day, the more we work with the impressions that we are getting, the more we are working with the tasks that we are getting, putting it into virtual reality via our uh, websites or use Google sites or uh, uh, YouTube or whatever of the free uh, platforms that are out there. That's part of what social media is made for. Of course, you need to learn which platform you are to utilize because there's a lot of platforms out there that are under transhuman technocratic races, uh, etc. So you need to understand which platform are you entering and working from, uh, which one are you participating in by your energy, by your being part of that platform, you become part of the whatever faction that's behind. So, and the more you interact there, the more you become aligned with it. And when we talk about my social media interaction, uh, I have the Facebook group that goes with the 2017 uh, Higher Awareness Lifestyle. And the reason why I put it there is because that's the bridge to the um, NOAA that is still there with the ones that want to shift from Americas and out. Then I got the whole project change maker group. That's the ones that are all, that's more for the ones that are technically already aligning themselves with the progressive dynamics. And even though I call it the change maker, it will also later on, or perhaps I'll create my bridge builder group. I don't know, perhaps, perhaps not. But that's the ones that are really working to transform energy from the, the electromagnetic driven energies and into what we call the density energies of the future human uh, communities, whether it will be part of trying to get out as an orb uh, as part of the registration program or part of the park races or, or whatever people choose to do under the solar races, because I know they will come later on as our reality field lifts up more in, in, um, in the holographic network that will allow for another possibilities to come in, which will then activate a, uh, other sequences within the holographic energy systems of different people, and they will more align with what we call the human humanoid uh, um, futures that are also there, but they are not possible for us to access right now because they are in the top level of the fifth cycle. They moved on the solar reaches, left a group behind inside the LPU, and then the rest of them moved on and everything that were connected there, similarly as the progressive races did. And the solar reaches, the ones that had left, they are working to pull out everything that they are connected with inside this reality, but they got very entangled as with the inner domain, so they got very entangled with the dark ones. So that's been some of the work that I have been participating in as well. So we are having all of these things that are changing, which is why as these things change, we must change our ways too when we work with uh, our own type of business. And I know uh, there is this whole word, technically business is connected to profit, right? So in a way we could say uh, the work that we are to do, but what does that mean? And we're still in between uh, realities where we don't really have the new understanding of being a business uh, or being busy. So uh, for me, there's nothing bad in being busy. Um, that is, uh, there is a lot of, of human... Um, avoidance in being busy but when we talk about the 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 um, original density one energies and the original purpose of transforming energy inside this reality the more we transform it's like doing exercise the more exercise you do the more energy you get the more you transform the physical energies on a higher the higher uh, vitality you will get the same goes with when we work when we do what we could call a kind of uh, we have a complex information system where we create a pattern of change from where we want to transform different types of energies and we create some kind of outcome of that quote unquote product an outcome of our uh, pattern of change and we manifest it into this reality where we begin to gain energy it will begin to uh, create an influential sphere from where it will connect to others that have the same type of genetic composition by that, that quote unquote product will then align naturally with people that have the affinity for it. So we don't need marketing because it's going to happen by energetic and genetic affinity. 
the principles of that. And then they will, because it's been put into the reality field network as a nodal point, that's my website, as well as the, the social network is where I create bridges to the groups that could come there. So they know it's there within their sector under their laws and their rules and therefore I operate within a very strict manner that I'm allowed to do this and I'm not allowed to do that. I'm allowed to sit in that energy, but not that energy. And eventually I'll not be allowed to do that anymore, but then it'll be created new levels of the, on the, what we call the, the network, the virtual network or the shared space as the internet is. Then we'll create new versions where we can do this. Perhaps I'll just do it on the Google sites or I won't do that at all. I'll just just do it on my website. So, so this is all depending on uh, which faction is behind who and what and whatever. And the ones that owns my website are part of the, the one.com. They are part of the enhanced humans. So therefore you could say, well, there are these, what, where are we creating our platforms and what are the quote unquote product that we are creating? We are creating a, a new architecture using density energies that are supposed to transform the enclosure energies into align itself with whatever product quote unquote outcome we are creating that will align with the future community networks and the expansion fields of either the POOC or uh, of the original progressive worlds. That will become possible if we reach the original fifth cycle network that is part of the five rings of, of the five lattice rings of the northern extreme uh, high level northern hemisphere. I talked about there will be this band between the Tropic of Cancer and the five rings, and that's what we'll call the ones that are going to do the fourth cycle in the original way. And if they ma manage to do that, uh, they will later on migrate upwards, and the last piece of our planet will be within these five rings of the Northern Hemisphere, the top level of the Northern Hemisphere, that band. And then the rest of the planet will change features again due to the climate changes and the breaking down of the electromagnetic field. And that's in the future where humans are no longer harnessing the energies of the electromagnetic field because it's no longer there, living in dome cities, artificial environments run by different types of alien technologies and aligned with the expansion field uh, and host fields of the parallel universal structures of the other universal um, lineages that are participating in that new type of project to get whatever's left here uh, out of here and then this planet and everything that's in the solar system will collapse eventually. So we are just uh, looking into these new features. I know I've been a little bit everywhere, but as always, when we talk about the understanding of why do you need to complete everything on that day, and when you get the impression into your, your code uh, field, you work with that to create it from a possibility into a probability on the day. Because if you haven't managed to generate it into a probability, you'll not be able to work with it the next day. It will vanish when you go to sleep. We've already seen how uh, we have already, those of us have been in this, we have already experienced how we've been harvested. But when you become part of, there will be a little bit of background noise here, but when you do become part, sorry about that, it's it's hot, it's autumn, but it's hot, so I have to have the window open. When you do become part of the future fields, um, again, with this whole noise, I, I hope that my computer is weeding it out, but that was a bike, a motorbike. That's one of the frequencies, the sound waves that comes from that, that really annoys my uh, nervous system. It probably one of the reasons why I put there to put my vibration down. All of these machines that run on fossil fuels, they have been part of uh, distorting the vibrational field of our planet because sound is vibration. Okay, so just understanding why there are no sound in the futures. So when we do talk about creating the momentum for our going to sleep as part of the new reality programs, to keep up the amplification factor, to keep up the momentum that we have gained from, we begin, we get the impression, we work with it during the day, we seed it into the shared spaces and whatever platform we use, we learn to figure out which platform is ours to work with. We seed it in, we work with it as um, in, in writing, uh, 
uh, whether you just choose to write it down in your notebook or you try you put it into the computer. I like to put it down on my notebook because that's more uh, in alignment with my body as me extending my body into writing using my right hand, creating it there. Then I work with it uh, inside the virtual reality, the shared space via my platform, which is my website or as part of a uh, um, book material or text material or anything that's on the computer because you don't have to be on the internet when you create the, 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 the possibility of it. You put it down in writing somehow, both inside your own field, but also via the mechanical means that our reality works on. Then you can put it on your platform or you can uh, do podcasts as I'm doing here, or you can put this out on YouTube, or you can, you can just keep it for yourself or put it on your own or uh, kind of, you can create a, a Vimeo account for free and you can do podcasts. You can upload there via your computer. So you have spelled it out, so to speak, both in writing, but also in sound. So this is the radiation code systems technically goes with writing as well as, um, uh, whether it is handwriting or via the computer systems. When you do the computer, you're using the binary codes of the virtual reality, so to speak, to put it into the, the electromagnetic um, spectrum of binary codes that are running our reality as things are right now. So you're both using your own writing, your own imagination, but you're also using, using the shared space that right now run on binary code systems, the virtual reality. But as you create more and more of your own platforms within virtual reality, you are also adding in what we call the original code sequences of the density energies because you're working on a higher neural network and not just the frequency-based network. So when we are as change makers going in and creating the possibility of becoming forerunners or bridge builders into the future human communities, we must always understand that the way we work with frequency energies and if we are on shared spaces or if we do share our ideas, we must always move beyond the frequency-based programs. We must always work in the density, reality, field, ideologies and ideas. So that when we do do the shared spaces, we will utilize the new network that is being provided to us also within the social platforms for now, because it's all about we're tapping into the world as it is, and then we are adding on the density energy so we can transform what is into a higher vibration. We're always doing that. And that's part of the future business, quote unquote, the, the patterns of change we engineering and architect to become a new type of outcome that will a attract uh, and exchange energy and different forms of energy with the ones that are receiving it in the other end. And they will at their end choose to buy it as things are now, but we're seeing things are becoming more and more what we understand as moneyless. It's all run on the internet right now. You're just adding in digits. So we're using binary code transfer, not to be a part of Bitcoin because that's all transhuman machine world. So I'm not, that's AI driven, which I know, for instance, PayPal is AI driven as well. But they are a different platform. They are not doing Bitcoins yet. If they do choose to create Bitcoins, they are going that way. They will have two groups, one that will do Bitcoins and one that won't. And there are the ones that are PayPal is also in Europe. So it's under the legislation of the European communities and the future uh, human communities as well. So again, we need to understand what platforms are we utilizing? Who is operating between or behind the platforms that we are uh, using to be part of the shared space? So that understanding uh, goes into, again, I know it's not outlined as in what to do, step one, two, three, and four, because this is where we really take all of the information you got from the progression work course material and you now begin to put it into implementation. You've got the psychology behind, you've got the sciences behind, and now we're talking implementation. And when we talk patterns of change, there is no linear step one, two, and three. We could put it that way. It's easier to do bullet points. There are these different elements that we need to master to be able to create the correct patterns of change. And that's why I'll face more and more out of doing uh, step one, two, and three and could do it, we did the progression work and we're still doing the step ladder building, 
But even though we're climbing up a ladder, we still have to master each of the steps, each one of the tiers that is an entire portion of the reality field. It's a holographic network. It's a, a pattern of change before we can move to the next level. And each pattern has different features that must be completed, but they are not necessarily in a linear sequence. It's not logical build up in the manner you have to do this first before you can do that. Sometimes we have to do something that is further down the pattern to activate the potentials of something that is earlier in the pattern. So there's no logic, we need to do this or that. Sometimes we need to do the end of the pattern, build that one first so that we can align with the trajectory of the pattern, the entire pattern with the outcome of it, what we want to achieve with it before we can begin unfolding the content of the different nodal points within the pattern that will lead to that outcome. We typically call that a goal setting. We know where we want to go and then we create a strategy to get there. But the strategy is not linear as and then we need to do this first and that first and that first. We need to understand the pattern of what we're creating, the holographic pattern, the purpose and the function of the pattern and what the code sequences are in that pattern. And the code sequences are what we unfold in our daily effort to achieve the outcome of the pattern that we are producing. So we are building the pattern by working with the pattern. And if we work correctly with the pattern nodal points and, and the possibilities it holds, we will put in more energy into the pattern by working with the different sections of the pattern from where we will begin to create from the impression of the pattern that is an impression into our energy field, into possibility, working with it in different ways and forms that are ours to figure out, we will create it into a probability. And as it gets into the point of probability, it will begin to gain momentum. And as it does, it will send out a vibration that will attract people that are working with the similar ideas or need that, uh, um, that information system to be able to continue their progression work for the highest good of the many. And they will be drawn to the pattern that you are creating. And as you create that pattern into being either in podcast or in writing or whatever version of it that you are, or a film or a movie or a cartoon or whatever it is that gives, uh, that shares information so that people get quote unquote enlightened so that they will get something out of the product that will allow them to grow in consciousness potentials, that will allow them to transform energy, that will allow them to begin to become productive, become more busy, become little busy bees, become these very workative human beings that are understanding that every day is a chance to transform reality. Work is no longer work to earn money. Work is to transform energy. Work is to transform who and what we are. Work is to uplift everybody to their highest purity rates, the highest standards, the highest progression rate. Whether it's within the, the future humans or it is part of the progressive world, it doesn't matter. We, we work with energy. We transform energy. We don't work, we transform. We don't do business. We create possibilities and probabilities and chat patterns of change, holographic network to generate engineer a specific outcome that can be of assistance, of assistance for other living beings to continue their evolutionary journey to become their true purpose and their true function of what they really are. So now you begin to see when we talk about the new models of productivity, which we could call business, new models of productivity for the highest good of the many in the future communities, we are here in a completely different mindset where it's not about earning money anymore. That's just a temporary thing, but it is exchange of energy and information. It is exchange of patterns of change that will allow us to become uh, what we call a higher and more proficient version of who and what we are unfolding our potentials into the new future communities. So with that very complex level of information, uh, I'll leave you to contemplate on that and take notes and work with it in the best way possible that you can in your current state. It must be this complicated. 
because we are now moving beyond the frequency ways of working with information. We are getting closer to work with information as holographic code systems. Thank you.